Now, I'm going to use these, uh, see if I can show you them better in the, I don't know if it's show. It's called Nag Champer or something like that, goodness knows what that means. But they smell very nice anyways, they've got a very nice scent and aroma. So if I'll see if I can light them without setting fire to my fingers. And I've also, two lots of apples, there's one up here. They can come and go with their apples as they want. I thought today I would show you some photographs that I took. Um, some I've taken a long time ago, but there are some that were sent to me by a friend who had caught uh, the aurora, we had a fantastic aurora. I've seen it with green and I've seen it with purple but I've never seen it with pink and this it was just stunning so I'll just let you see these and enjoy these. Do you hear the birds? Isn't that lovely? different colours are just stunning. Cloud formations, the swirls. This was on the coast. I want to show you some photographs of something that they call fire rainbows. Uh, we'll go, aren't these amazing? Fire rainbows, they sort of describe them as a um, form of cloud iridescence and it often gets confused with fire rainbows. Uh, cloud iridescence, um, it's not multicoloured like a fire rainbow 
and it all originates, the phenomenon comes from the diffraction of light. Uh, whereas fire rainbows is refraction of light. So diffraction is curving light um, and so it bends when it passes an obstacle because it can't go through it whereas refraction goes through it. So fire rainbows always occur um, at a fixed sort of location uh, wherever the sun or moon, wherever the source of light is, it might be the sun or the moon that is their source of light. So colour bands in a fire rainbow always run horizontal with red at the top and violet at the bottom. So if you think of red, orange, yellow, green, um, blue, indigo and violet and you would have I could say the red at the very top and the violet at the bottom. So iridescence doesn't show it like that, like a rainbow always has that spectrum. Iridescence is different. Iridescence is just random colouring. So it's a very beautiful phenomena and I, I think that fire rainbows particularly occur in the United States. You seem to have the majority of so fire rainbows they're circumhorizontal arcs um, and they appear when high level cirrus clouds are at a specific angle and it's only when the light source that is either the sun or the moon is 50, 58 degrees above the horizon so ice crystals which are formed at that height um, they disassemble the light and into colours and they, they have to have a specific shape, the ice crystals have to be hexagonal and the faces of them must run parallel to the ground and the ent light enters through a vertical side face and then leaves from the bottom face, hence we get this amazing refraction. Um, they're very very rare, they are rare, uh, but lucky old United States, you get them. You get them all. So what is the point of me talking about this, really? But I want to move back to the aurora. These aurora th that you've seen, the images that I've shown you. If you look at all those photographs, I'll run them again for you here, how stunningly beautiful they are. Now, on that night that that occurred, the next day I started to receive big downloads of information and healing at the same time and I think they do the healing because the, the downloads is disruptive to your to your mind and your body and your health so they do the healing at the same time make sure we're all in good health and I wondered if there was a correlation in that the Aurora need, it creates magnetism, it comes from magnetism, the flipping of the magnetic. When that occurs then we get these amazing auroras. My theory is that you, they need the magnetics in order to give us healing or downloads. They need that energy that comes from that. That's my theory. I wonder if you agree. I don't think that they can do that without the help of the magnetics. So my question would be, all those people who have had unusual phenomena, whether it's downloads of information, whether it is uh, healing, or whether they've received mind speak, has that coincided with the flip of the magnetic field and the aurora? Now, not everybody can see the aurora, but that doesn't mean the magnetic field isn't there and hasn't flipped and they can't use the energy from it. Do you understand what I mean? Do you see where I'm coming from? It's like Wi-Fi. The birds agree. 
I think it's very similar to like the way Wi-Fi operates. What I would ask is, if any of you are in receipt of information, downloads, or healing, or have experiences with uh, beings on your property, or have had connections through MindSpeak, does it coincide do you think it coincides with any aurora activity or any other astral uh, astronomical phenomena or something going on in the constellations I don't know like a transit of different planets comet activity this sort of stuff it's just one of those things that is occurring to me if the atmospherics are correct and in the right position then maybe it, these things are helped they can assist and maybe that's how they can bring them to us like I say I, I just wonder if it's like a form of Wi-Fi So they can connect to the, the grid. You know, like ley lines are under the ground. They're important. I wonder if that's their aerial communications above ground. Okay, well it's just a short video this week, really, to bring that to you, to see what you thought about that, whether that meant anything to you or not, whether we can connect it or not. So thank you, thank you for watching, have yourself a fantastic weekend, a fantastic week ahead, and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.